Number 10, Hulk 2099. This is the only Hulk on this list that is not a Bruce Banner. No, this version of the Hulk is a guy named John Eisenhart. He was a corporate lawyer for big movie studios who went to manipulate a group called the Knights of Banner, who were a cult-like group of warriors who followed the ideologies of Bruce Banner. John was going to gain the rights for their name in order to make a movie about them, all while giving them nothing in return. He turns them into this corporation called Sweet Dreams, thinking they'll be brought in peacefully, but it doesn't go that way. The only Knight of Banner who survives, a kid, goes goes to a gamma machine, but John saves the kid, pushing him out of the way and being blasted with gamma radiation. John can turn into the Hulk whenever he wants. He has a super strong prehensile tongue, and he is much more beast-like with massive claws. He is just as powerful as the regular Hulk, but unfortunately, his comics were not popular enough to last more than 12 issues. Maybe he'll get a resurgence, I don't know. And at number nine, it's Age of Apocalypse Hulk. A world where the megalomaniacal apocalypse rose to power and mutants rule mercilessly while humans are treated like cattle. This version of Bruce Banner originally betrayed mankind, but after his experiments turned him into the Hulk, he fought for humans once again. This version of the Hulk starts off as the Grey Hulk, but is referred to as Thing until he saves Tony Stark, Gwen Stacy, and Victor Von Doom from a gamma nuke that he created that inadvertently goes off, forcing his transformation from gray to Green Hulk. Now this guy is pretty much an equal to his normal 616 self, but once Weapon X becomes the ruler of this earth, this Hulk is able to go toe to toe with him, shrugging off attacks and giving a hell of a fight for the crazy powerful mutant. And at number 8, Zombie Hulk. Marvel Zombies isn't really a future story. Like it sort of becomes one, but it isn't when it starts. Time is relative, so look. Basically, in the story, eventually the zombie Galacti, as in those zombified heroes who consumed the Silver Surfer and Galactus and gained the power cosmic, travel out into the universe and begin consuming worlds and galaxies. So much so that they consume everything until nothing is left. As you can imagine, that's the kind of thing that may take a while. Long enough to be considered the future? I shall allow you to debate below. This Hulk was a lead consumer in the team of cosmically powered zombie superheroes and villains. So much so that when they ran out of people to consume, Zombie Thanos blamed Hulk for eating more than his fair share, to which Zombie Hulk decided he had enough of Thanos and put him out of commission. Number 7, Lizard Hulk. In the alternate future of the Spider Island story, the whole of New York City has been taken over by a villain known as the Spider Queen. The Spider Queen has infected almost all inhabitants of the city, including all of the heroes, with a virus that turns them into mindless spider zombie like slaves under her control. Luckily, there is a group of heroes who make a resistance to this villainous spider queen. Most notable among them would be Eugene Flash Thompson or Agent Venom. Agent Venom eventually realizes that if he subjects some of these spider hybrid heroes to a different DNA tampering process, like for example the lizard serum or even the green goblin serum, that it will override the spider transformation, effectively curing the patients. When a group of spider heroes, including the spider hulk, attack Agent Venom, he injects the spider hulk with the lizard serum, effectively turning him into a more giant and muscular lizard hulk. He got a tail, he got sharp teeth, he got scales, he a lizard hulk baby! Number 6, Intelligent Design God Hulk from What If Planet Hulk. Most comic book readers, and especially fans of Marvel and the Hulk, know of the storyline where the Illuminati banished the Hulk from Earth to send him to another planet. He ended up crash landing on Sakaar and becoming a gladiator turned liberator turned ruler of the planet until his ship self destructed, killing his family and bringing him back to Earth with a vengeance that no guilty person was safe from. What if Planet Hulk ends up asking the question, what if the Illuminati's banishment had hit its original target? In this story, Hulk lands on an incredibly peaceful and serene planet. And sure, he goes a bit ragey at first, but he eventually realizes the planet is inhabited by a race of peaceful creatures. Over long periods of time, the Hulk helps this race to evolve and become a thriving civilization. They end up viewing the Hulk as their god, and he basically acts as one that leads them to wealth and prosperity. It's one of the few Hulk stories that doesn't end in tears, and I'm more than happy to talk about it for that reason alone. 
Number 5. Dark Knight Returns This is an older version of Bruce from Frank Miller's alternate future reality of Earth 31. Here Batman comes out of retirement when Harvey Dent returns. To make matters worse, the Joker also escapes custody. Not only does Batman have Dent, the Joker, and the criminal scum of Gotham to contend with, but Superman is also after him as well. In this reality, Superman had become a government hero, becoming the loyal ally to the President of the United States. Kind of like his guard dog, really. And the President of the United States does not take too kindly to Batman's return. In the end, the two must face off in a famous fight that would go on to inspire multiple narratives, including the Batman v Superman film from the DCEU. Number 4. Damian Wayne One of the darkest Batmen to arise would be Damian Wayne's Batman. Damian takes up the cape and cowl in a possible future story featured in Batman issue 666. Get it? 666. Known as Batman in Bethlehem. Batman in Bethlehem is a story where, in the future, Damian Wayne sells his soul to Satan in order to ensure Gotham's protection. This drastic measure happens in a world where people really are looking for some kind of security as climate change, war, and acts of terror threaten the entire planet, turning it into a hellish futuristic landscape. This future version of Damian, who becomes Batman, also seems to be impervious to gunfire and no longer restrains himself from killing those who oppose him. Kind of like. My dad was here so that I could like be this Batman later. I feel like Daddy Batman would not be too happy with you, Damian. He would be like, don't kill people, but you're gonna do what you're gonna do, I guess. It's a different world. Number three, Thomas Wayne. Although it might seem weird to put Thomas Wayne on this list, as he's Batman's father, and so in a way is like part of his past, in the alternate future known as Flashpoint, Thomas actually becomes Batman instead of Bruce. This is after Bruce is killed, causing Thomas to make a plan to get vengeance and inspiring him to become a vigilante fighting for justice on the streets of Gotham. Martha, however, kind of goes the opposite way with it. The death of Bruce causes her to basically go insane. Unable to move on or let go, she ends up haunted by his memory and becomes the villain known as the Joker, becoming Thomas's sworn nemesis, despite the love that they once shared. What a tragic story. Number 2. Dick Grayson Helena isn't the only one to carry on Batman and Catwoman's legacy on Earth 2. Let's not forget that before Helena was born, Batman had an adoptive son in the boy wonder known as Robin, aka Dick Grayson. Often known as the original Robin, across many different worlds. On Earth 2, Dick Grayson would end up taking his adoptive father's mantle before Helena did and operate as Batman for a time. He settles down with Barbara Gordon and the two even have a son together who they name John. Dick, however, loses the use of his legs when he becomes paralyzed by the Joker shooting him through the stomach, which damages his spine. Sound familiar? Dick would later become Oracle. In this reality, Barbara ends up as a cop who gets shot and dies while attempting to help her family flee Darkseid's invasion. Their son John grows up to become his Aunt Helena's sidekick, Robin. Super cute. I like it. Not Babs' death though. I don't like that. That's that's not nice. Number one, Terry McGinnis. When it comes to Batman, there are actually a lot of people who would be suited to don the cape and cowl. Sometimes in his stead, and other times as those who would take up the mantle after he dies or he retires. In the case of Terry McGinnis, he was pretty much created to become the new Batman. Using Bruce's own DNA, Amanda Waller designed Terry as part of her project Batman Beyond. She basically overwrote the reproductive DNA of Terry's father and chose the McGinnis family to create the modern genetic Bruce Wayne duplicate because their psychological profiles were close matches to Bruce's own parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne. Which means that, you know, when Terry grows up, he should be like pretty much a perfect replica. Even more so if his parents had been assassinated like Amanda wanted, but uh, didn't work out for Waller there. <laughs> Probably for the best though, I don't think you should assassinate people's parents just to turn them into Batman, that seems pretty messed up, even for Amanda Waller. At number 10 we have Weapon X Wolverine. First appearing in X-Men Alpha number 1, this version of Wolverine is missing one hand and fights in a Magneto led version of the X-Men. It's hard to imagine Logan being even more grizzled than we're used to, but with face paint and a ton of built up resentment about the whole missing hand situation, this version of the hero shows what age can do to a person, especially when you're creeping towards the ripe age of 3. Known as Weapon X in this future reality, this Wolverine soon becomes known as Weapon Omega. And to be fair, his anger isn't the only thing driving him to be more vicious than ever. This version of Wolverine is augmented by the Celestials and can only eventually be stopped by Jean Grey. At number 9 we have Counter Earth Hawkeye. 
This could be contested whether or not he's from the future or just an alternate reality, but time is kind of hard to follow sometimes when dealing with interdimensional travel. So I'll leave this one up for debate. Regardless, it's a pretty unique version of Wolverine that I thought was worth mentioning. Franklin Richards writes a new version of Hawkeye in Onslaught Reborn number one, who appears to be a different iteration than the one we're used to. And that's because behind the mask is actually Wolverine and not Clint Barton. On Counter Earth, this version of Wolverine is part of the Avengers and it seems to me that this alternate dimension is further along in its own timeline allowing for Wolverine to possess some kind of magical ability brought on by Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. At number 8 is Phalanx Wolverine from the newer comic series X Deaths of Wolverine, released between January and March of 2022. This version of Wolverine travels into the future to save a being who is very very important to the mutant race. And as he travels through time, he starts to envision memories from his past. Memories that he hadn't ever before been able to recall. One of the more significant of these lost memories is one where he was present during the birth of Charles Xavier, saving his family from Omega Red. This storyline uses a future version of Wolverine to remind us that this hero, being the most published in the history of Marvel Comics, has so much history that there is still new lore to be uncovered even in 2022. At number 7 we have Logan from Earth 1051 1. 1000, 10,511. Another iteration of Weapon X, this version of Wolverine appears in Wolverine Weapon X issue number 12 for just a brief moment. But in the short time that he appears we get a glimpse into a whole new world where Wolverine has lost both his hands, replacing one of them with a hook. During a major battle in a distant future, he comes in to support his team with a big black beard and overgrown hair and a costume that is seems entirely upgraded. He's got metal shoulder and chest pads with a utility belt and he seems like, well, seems like he's been through a lot. He fights against Roxxon to take back the government but is eventually, spoiler alert, killed by Deathlock. At number 6 we have James Howlett from Earth 96099. Only appearing very briefly, this future version of the hero is totally missing his arm after his battles with the Hulks, which seems like a theme, this whole no arm thing. But anyway, this time he's also totally bald as well. He decides to recruit a new X-Men team with a new race of mutants that he encounters in his future timeline. His goal is to rebuild Baltimore of all places after it is destroyed along with much of civilization after a major war, but he also has to protect the world from an army of mindless hulks who continue to act as the main threat in this storyline. Number 5, Spider-Man 2211. Spider-Man 2211 is like Spider-Man 2099, but from even farther into the future. He is known as a time spinner and does his best to protect the time field. This version of Spider-Man is named Max Born and his appearance also differs from the Spider-Man of Earth 616 and the Spider-Man of 2099 in the regard that his costume has multiple mechanized arms. Kind of like Dr. Octopus, or more specifically, Dr. Octopus's look when he became Spider Man and was known as Superior Spider Man. Max Boren's arch nemesis is Hobgoblin of 2211, who it turns out is actually his own daughter, Robin. <gasps> Gasp. Along with Spider Man of Earth 616 and Spider Man of 2099, he faces and defeats Hobgoblin only for her true identity to be revealed to him. Number 4, Rain specifically Spider-Man Rain. This future version of Spider-Man hails from an even bleaker reality than Final Stand Spider-Man, hailing from the comic known as Spider-Man Rain. Here Peter ends up working at a flower shop after years of being a hero. No longer operating as Spider-Man, this version of Peter has become somewhat senile, frail, and old. He is also haunted by his past, having hallucinations of Mary Jane who is now long dead. Mary Jane in this reality apparently died from being close to Peter, which he carries immense guilt over. Apparently his radioactiveness was not so good for MJ's body, ended up giving her cancer and sadly killed her in the end. Peter eventually does return to heroics but even then it's a pretty sad return, with him mostly getting his butt whooped when he isn't busy being swept up in some kind of fantasy or hallucination of his past. Number 3 MC2 In the MC2 reality of Earth 982, 
Peter Parker actually gets to grow up and settle down with MJ. The two do end up married with kids, with daughter May, Mayday Parker, successfully being born. May grows up to have spider powers like her dad and eventually becomes known as the hero Spider Girl, living up to her family legacy and becoming a hero in her own right herself. Peter and MJ in this reality also have another child, May's younger brother, Benji. Benji, as a youngster, also displays abilities and powers. He also goes on to have an adventure as a little tyke with Carnage, unintentionally bonding with the symbiote. Fortunately, his older sister May is able to save him, although for a time, Ben would actually suffer from permanent hearing loss as a result of that rescue. Number 2. Jerry Drew In the same future that MC2 Peter hails from, known as the alternate reality of Earth 982, Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman, also has a child. MC2 is notoriously known for being the reality where superheroes get to grow up, retire, or settle down to live a somewhat normal life, possibly amidst continued heroics for those, of course, who don't retire. As such, Jessica is also one of those heroes. She gets married and ends up pregnant, but unfortunately, her son Jerry is born with a rare bloodborne illness. In an attempt to cure Jerry, Jessica submits him to the same experimentation which saved her as a child and also gave her spider powers. The same happens to Jerry, who also gets spider powers and ends up becoming a hero. Taking up the mantle, Spider Man. After being inspired by stories that his mom tells him of her days as a hero and of Spider Man's adventures. Number one, Spider Man 2099. What would a future Spider Man list be without the future Spider Man? That's right, we're talking about Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider Man 2099. Or just Spider Man, really, as he's known in his own world, because it is 2099, so people don't just go like, hey, that's that hero 2099, and that's that villain 2099. 2099 is often thought of as being the future for the main comic book continuity of Earth 616. Here, Miguel wasn't always actually the most altruistic guy, which I think is part of what makes him so cool as a character. He's got flaws. And becoming Spider-Man is part of his journey to becoming a better person. He becomes better as an individual as he becomes a hero. Miguel also comes with a futuristic look and some future tech as well. He got powers after submitting himself to his own experiments in the hopes of ridding himself of an addiction that was forced on him by the company he worked for, Alchemax, in order to prevent him from quitting. That's a pretty intense way to try to get someone to not quit. Be like, well, we create this uh, substance and we're gonna give it to you without you knowing, and now you have uh, an addiction to it, and now you have to keep working for us if you want that thing. So, uh, there you go. But thank goodness Miguel found a way around that. And it's ten Spider Man Rain. I love talking about Spider Man Rain because honestly, it's pretty damn ridiculous. Spider Man Rain was Marvel's counter to the Dark Knight Returns storyline from DC. Set 30 years in the future, Peter has retired and Mary Jane is dead. The mayor of New York has taken control of the cities in more ways than just being the mayor. And when JJJ gets Spider Man back, the mayor releases the Sinister Six from prison, including versions of Electro, Mysterio, Craven, Sandman, Scorpion, and Hydro Man, as well as a dead Doc Ock tentacle who saves Peter's life after his mask was ripped off in front of a crowd. Doc Doc Ock's final command to his tentacles was to show Peter three grave markers, those of Mary Jane, May Parker, and Ben Parker. After being buried in Mary Jane's coffin by Octopus's tentacle and coming face to face with and conquering his dinner demons, Peter emerges in his famous red and blue suit, which he had secretly buried with her. Cause, yeah. It's also revealed that the mayor, Edward Sachs, is actually Venom, who plans to turn all of New York into an army of symbiotes. But the worst part is when it's revealed that MJ died because of Peter's radioactive swimmers. I guess having a kid with a superhero is a kinda risky business. <laughs> Give me that episode of Sex Send Me to the ER. <laughs> Well oh, then. In at 9, The Dark Knight Returns. As you can expect when Batman has to, you know, return, Batman was retired and Gotham City had become a haven for all sorts of violent gangs. But before you can say why so serious, the man is back in action and gets yet another new Robin to help clean up the streets of his city. But I know what you're thinking. Batman cannot be street sweeper certified, and you're probably right, but what I mean is he's back to fighting crime. But of course, no alternate universe dystopian Batman story would be complete without a take on the Joker, who still represents the same anarchy threatening to destroy society. I think he's trying to fix it. On the other side though is Superman, a tool of the authoritarian government who wants Batman out of the picture. And as always, it's up to Bruce to find the perfect balance between law and order. Ah, perfectly balanced as all things should be. I love when the superheroes are old though and still try to fight crime. Like I just, I just picture my great grandfather like trying to kick like some, some thug who's like at his nursing home trying to take his shampoo. Just, yeah. That, that's what I, that's what I imagine. In at 8, The Ray. 
Set on an earth where Germany won World War II, it can make things pretty clear when you're talking about a dystopia. The Ray is a member of the resistance fighting against the German soldiers and is the primary protagonist of Freedom Fighters The Ray, which is an animated series set in the Arrowverse. The Ray in the crossover at least is shown to be quite powerful, being able to take down Red Tornado from what I can remember. This dude also has like a really cool suit and in the show is either married to or dating Captain Colt, which is sweet. He gained his powers after the original Ray died in front of him and he was also included in the comic adaptation adaptation of the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover which was already adapted from the original comic event. But this one is based off the CW with Felicity and other people. However, the Ray was destroyed along with his Earth in the TV version of the crossover, but in the comics he was killed along with Felicity and Nyssa. This guy has some mad superpowers though, like super strength, flight, light energy blasts, light speed, invisibility, photokinesis allowing him to make solid light constructs, bioluminescence, and that's not even the whole list. Okay, it's freaking nuts, man. And it's 7 Zombie Hulk. Marvel Zombies is probably one of the most accessible alternate futures in Marvel Comics, according to multiple people. And I don't think that we need much of an explanation here as to why Zombie Hulk would be scary powerful. Hulk is already a brute with anger issues, but this story takes place in an alternate version of the Marvel Universe called Earth 2149, where all superpowered beings became infected by an extraterrestrial virus which transformed them into zombies. So the Hulk, who already had a passion for smashing, is now hungry for human flesh. Do you see where I'm going? Going with this. On the wiki, his abilities are listed as genius level intellect, superhuman strength, superhuman speed, master combatant, and cosmic powers from when he ate the Silver Surfer and Galactus. But his hobbies also include devouring living flesh, which sounds like the worst dating profile ever, or the best. They even have a section for crimes he's committed, like genocide, cannibalism, and more. I wish they had that section on Tinder. That'd make things interesting. And it's six Injustice Flash. But what about a world where Superman was tricked into killing Lois Lane and his unborn son by the Joker who made him hallucinate fighting Doomsday, but then also nukes Metropolis. That's a thing that happened and it was absolutely brutal. So Superman ends up killing the Joker and then gets a taste for it, basically becoming a dictator of the world and then turning it into a dystopia where his word is law. Batman among others obviously fight it, but one of the superheroes who joins Superman is actually the Flash, who is still super fast, but now he works for a totalitarian regime. He he does end up defecting, but let's be honest, he's more powerful when he's working with Superman because everyone ends up fearing him. He could shove a vibrating hand through your chest faster than you could say your own name. Just the thought of Superman having a speedster in his corner is enough to make your spine shiver. At number 5, we have the DCAU Superman from Batman Beyond. Only aging slightly, leaving some grey in his hair, this version of Kal-El is actually turned evil by Starro the Conqueror, who influences his actions over time to fit his evil agenda. But before this is found out, Superman leads the Justice League Unlimited for a while into the future, even inviting Terry McGinnis, aka Batman Beyond, into the League. It's good he does this too, because Batman becomes the one who frees Superman from Starro's grasp down the line. This version of Superman is a more experienced and stronger hero, and although he's tricked by a villain into doing some evil deeds, this isn't a list ranking power or wit. This version of Superman is just one of the more well-known and respected, and I figured he at least had to go in the top five. At number four is Jordan Elliott. This is one of my personal favorites of these future versions of Superman because it's a rare example of a future Kal-El hanging up the mantle of Superman and actually living the existence of a mortal man, which I think is a pretty cool glimpse into the character and how he would act if his life were simple and much less influential. His motivation to do this is that he actually ends up killing Mr. Muxia's put luck, which Thank goodness, so I don't have to say the guy's name anymore. Who he kills after the annoying little dude lays out a number of bad things to happen in Superman's life. In a fit of shame, Superman voluntarily walks into a room containing gold kryptonite which strips him of his powers permanently. He then takes on the name of Jordan Elliott after his father Jor-El and marries Lois Lane in anonymity. And honestly, I'm happy for the dude because we don't have to deal with that little mixiesta plick plick guy anymore, right? And also, Superman's done enough. At number three is the Superman from the Dark Knight Returns storyline. One of the most iconic storylines involving both Superman and Batman takes place in a future where the government, aka Lex Luthor and Brainiac, has control over him. 
and they force Superman to carry out missions for them as a kind of superpowered contractor. A brainwashed superpowered contractor, that is. Seeing this from afar, Bruce Wayne decides he has to venture into the dangerous territory of mortal versus alien combat, taking on Superman 1v1. Luckily, Clark Kent comes back from his brainwashing, but only after a huge battle between the two former friends. At number two is the Superman from the Kingdom Come storyline. This iconic future version of Superman has to come out of retirement to protect the human race against a new, misguided group of younger super beings. A more grizzled, aged, and wise Superman, the Kingdom Come storyline brings a ton of humanity to the character as he faces the challenge of humbling himself and his allies in their older age. After a murderous superhero named Magog is acquitted of killing the Joker, Superman goes into hiding for 10 years, leaving Kansas to be overrun by a community of misguided superpowered beings. Having also lost Lois Lane, Superman becomes jaded, but ultimately comes out of hiding to reform the Justice League. On top of reforming a younger generation of misguided heroes though, and well, a brainwashed Captain Marvel, which adds a huge rut in the whole works, they have to also prevent the humans from dropping three massive nuclear bombs on Kansas, which are also super powered to affect super powered beings more than they originally would. This version of Superman shows a side to the hero that we are not used to, giving him a wiser, more jaded disposition. It really proves that doing the right thing is just in Kal-El's blood, no matter how much the world has betrayed him. At number one is Superman Prime. This has got to be the most powerful and iconic futuristic version of Superman from the comics. And don't get this mixed up with Superboy Prime either, that's a whole other guy. Superman Prime appears in the DC 1 million series and sets out at the end of the 21st century to explore the cosmos. He then returns briefly in the 700th century, that's roughly 70,000 years later, and spends his time in his new fortress of solitude which is the sun. Finally, another 10 and a half thousand years later in the 853rd century, he comes back again, this time with a totally golden makeover and creates a new Lois Lane from scratch along with some other key players from his old life. This version of Superman is just completely overpowered and more of a god than many other iterations of the hero, giving us a glimpse into the vast expanse and possibility of a distant future for Superman. Number 10, Legends of the Dead Earth. In Legends of the Dead Earth, the surviving human population of Earth are all basically aboard a spaceship, which drifts kind of aimlessly through space as it's lost its heading. The humans have also been on the spaceship so long, they basically forgot there's even a world outside. Side. However, Batman rises up among them to become a hero and help them once again find their way. This Batman is not the Batman Bruce Wayne, but instead a well-meaning citizen on the spaceship who learns the truth about how they are basically lost. He takes up the mantle of the hero from old folklore known as Batman and inspires a girl aboard the ship named Triss Plover to help him in his fight to fix the ship's navigation system. It's actually a really depressing story though because in the end she's like, man I'm not going to be alive to get to this planet. What's the point of anything? Number 9, Saint Batman. Saint Batman was the name Asriel took up in one of the dark multiverse alternate realities. Here Asriel had taken up the cape and cowl in Batman's stead after his back was broken by Bane, but refused to give back the mantle and instead of Batman defeating Jean-Paul and taking the mantle back, Azrael basically won that fight keeping it. He turned Bruce into a shadow of his former self, removing all his limbs and keeping him alive through kind of a cybernetic life support thing, which also seemed to cause Bruce extreme pain. Years later, Bruce is saved by the son of Talia al Ghul and Bane. However, it turns out in rescuing Batman and later defeating Azrael, they really just swapped out one awful tyrant for an even worse one. And friends, before we head on to the next point, if you are loving this list, we would love if you headed over to our Facebook page and gave it a, a like and a follow. It really does help us out over here at YouTube, so thank you. Number six, Jace Fox. Jace becomes Batman in the possible future we get a glimpse into through DC's Future State event. In this event, Jace Fox, also known as Tim Fox, one of the children of Batman's ally Lucius Fox, ends up becoming Batman in a cyberpunk dystopian 
Dystopian future where Gotham has become a police state. Jace is a mysterious figure but stumbles upon Batman's tech and decides to try and use it to do some good, despite the fact that at this point all masks are outlawed in Gotham. Jace Fox keeps his vigilante deeds and persona a secret from the rest of the Fox family. Many of his combat skills come from his life as a mercenary and from Katana, who he was once a protege of. Number 7 Justice League of Assassins In the alternate future reality of Earth 14, the JLA is a little bit different. Instead of being the Justice League of America, they are known as the Justice League of Assassins, which still perfectly fits that same acronym, so yay. JLA. Like in the main reality, Batman also ends up joining this team. The world they live in seems to be a post-apocalyptic war zone, when we see the JLA in issue number 15 of the 2016 Superman series. Despite their most valiant efforts, the Justice League of Assassins, including Batman, end up defeated and killed by the prophecy. Batman actually ends up losing his head as a result of this fight. He's like the first one to go. Gets his head shot clean off. At least he still gets to finish what he was saying though. As this head pops off. Number six, Helena Wayne. In the alternate future reality of Earth 2, it is Helena Wayne, Batman and Catwoman's daughter, who lives on to carry on the Batman legacy. Helena Wayne is often known by the name Huntress. Not to be confused with Helena Bertinelli, the Huntress of the main continuity, but eventually goes on to take up her father's mantle of Batman. Yeah, not Batwoman, just Batman. Kinda love it. We haven't gotten to see too much of Helena's Batman in action, but I have always loved the idea of Catwoman and Batman settling down together and having a daughter who would one day be inspired to carry on their legacy and become a hero using either of their superhero names in their honor. At number 5 we have Impulse. Bart Allen is the grandson of the original Flash, Barry Allen, and he inherits all of his super speed abilities. But this futuristic speedster faces a challenge that his grandfather never had to, which is a sped up metabolism. This this ages Bart Allen at an extreme speed, making him age to 12 years old while only being 2 years old chronologically. Luckily, Bart travels back in time, a trend I'm noticing with these futuristic heroes, and teams up with his cousin Wally West to normalize his metabolism. He then takes up the mantle of impulse due to his impulsive personality and carries on a similar power set to any of the other speed force conduits, with super speed, accelerated healing, and electrokinesis. But Bart has some powers unique to to him as well, like a photographic memory, increased hand to hand combat, and mechanical aptitude. At number four, I'm putting Batman Beyond. The only character on this list who was first introduced in his own animated series outside of the comics, Batman Beyond is one of the longtime favorites of many Batman fans. This version of Batman hails from a cyberpunk future where he is portrayed as a younger Batman predecessor wearing an extremely advanced bat suit that offers the wearer superhuman abilities. He can see and hear through walls has super strength, speed, and reflexes, and most impressively of all, Terry McGinnis' Batman can fly. Not glide, fly. But I'm sure you knew that already. With some fans online calling this Batman a mix between Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Batman, there's no question that this futuristic version of the hero we know and love deserves a spot on this list. At number 3 we have Spider-Man 2099. This version of Spider-Man is donned by Miguel O'Hara, who intentionally researches a way to turn himself into Spider-Man using technology and DNA enhancement. He succeeds and gains all the powers that present day Spider-Man has, and more. This version of Spider-Man also gives himself a couple added bonuses of increased vision and hearing, as well as his signature talons and fangs that he gains through his genetic mutation. With these extra powers, there's no debating whether or not this futuristic version of the hero is more powerful than our present day Spider-Man. When he gets stuck in the present day, Spider-Man 2099 becomes one of the most powerful and coolest looking, in my opinion, superheroes in the world. This is one of the most impressive futuristic heroes to come out of the 2099 storyline, and he's probably the one who's lasted the longest so far as well. At number 2 is Thor 2099. In the future there is an entire religion based on the mythos of the superhero and god of thunder Thor. Similarly to the Hulk who also has his own religion. I guess that's kind of a thing in the future. And Cecil McAdams is one of the priests at the Thorite church who is chosen by the CEO of Alchemax to become one of the few people to be given the power of Thor himself. Not only this, but McAdams and the others who are part of this experiment are then brainwashed into 
thinking they're the real deal, making Cecil's drive and passion as the hero about as similar to the real thing as his powers are. But McAdams is the one out of all the test subjects who shines out of all of them and basically becomes a version of Thor that has the same power set as the modern day God of Thunder. And considering how powerful Thor is in the present day, there's no question that any hero from the future that carries the mantle would end up high on the list. At number one, the final entry on our list is the most well-known time traveling hero of them all, Cable. This guy deserves the top spot on the list because he is one of the most high powered time traveling heroes in any comic. There are definitely some OP time traveling villains out there, but this guy takes the cake for the good guys. Son of Scott Summers, AKA Cyclops and Jean Grey, Cable has greatness and power in his genes. Transported to the future when he was just a baby, Cable goes through a series of hardships in what is known to be a pretty bleak future future and returns to the present infected with a techno organic virus. This virus turns him into a cyborg like being that has increased strength on top of his already formidable telepathic and telekinetic abilities. With such a dynamic power set and I didn't even touch on most of it to keep this video short, Cable is the perfect hero to have leading the charge for a better future. He is often in positions of leadership given his foresight into the future and his time traveling abilities and often leads some of the present day's most influential and powerful heroes into battle. He is usually seen as a prophet who takes on the impossible task of changing the outcome of the future for the better of humankind. And with everything he brings to the table, he has to be considered one of the most powerful and impressive superheroes to ever come from the future. Number 10, Peter B. Parker. This alternate future version of Peter Parker hails from the Into the Spider-Verse multiverse. He is the older, mid 30s to approaching perhaps middle-aged Spider-Man, also known as Peter B. Parker. With the B in his name presumably standing for Benjamin, like the main continuity Peter of 616. In this reality, Peter is all grown up. He settles down with MJ only to later get divorced as Mary Jane wanted kids, but Peter wasn't ready. It's clear that this Peter Parker regrets some of his life choices, namely hurting MJ and wants her back. He is pulled into Miles' reality thanks to Kingpin's super colliders experiments. Peter attempts to train Miles while also teaming up with him to defeat Kingpin and return both himself and the other alternate spider folks back to their home realities before it's too late. Number 9, Officer Parker. In the alternate future of Earth X, Peter and Mary Jane's daughter May does not die and instead lives growing up to become that reality's venom. MJ dies of cancer before things start to get wild on Earth X, leaving Peter to take care of his daughter alone. Their relationship becomes strained as Peter doesn't believe that May can actually control the symbiote, when in reality, she can. In this future, Peter's identity is also revealed to the public by Norman Osborn when he takes over the Daily Bugle, which also runs the paper out of business due to the revelation that the hero they called a supposed menace had been on their payroll the whole time. Eventually, Peter is convinced to join the New York police force by Luke Cage, and he works hard to protect the people of New York and later their scarce food supply. When the polls are reversed and New York freezes over as a result. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists about future alternate versions of Spidey, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Final Stand Spider-Man. Not all future Spider-Men finish life happy, and not all of them even are still considered heroes in the end. With Final Stand Spider-Man, the world is a lot more bleak in this future. This is an alternate future version of Peter Parker from a possible future that Madam Web gets a glimpse into. Here Peter Parker ends up killing Kraven the Hunter and goes on to kill Dr. Octopus. He ends up betraying those he loves and in the end when the NYPD hunt him down, giving him an opportunity to surrender and admit to his crimes, Spider-Man refuses. He is shot and killed in this final stand. Number 7, Avengers Forever. This is actually actually a version of future Spider-Man often referred to as Spider-Man 2099. Not THE Spider-Man 2099 though, as I said this is an alternate version of that alternate version of Spider-Man. This Spider-Man 2099 is still Miguel O'Hara, but instead of hailing from the 2099 reality of Earth 928, this version of Miguel hails from the reality of Earth 98120, as seen in the 90s comic series Avengers Forever. In this alternate future, Miguel ends up joining the Avengers. But but unfortunately later meets his end at the totemic life force draining hands of 
Moreland the Inheritor during the Spider-Verse event. Number 6. The CEO As we said before, not all future versions of Spider-Man are heroes. Case in point, the Peter Parker who is still alive in 2099 as seen in the story from the 2011 video game, Spider-Man Edge of Time. Here Peter Parker lives on to the year 2099 thanks to anti-aging tech. He fakes his own death as Spider-Man and operates in the shadows, becoming the CEO of the company Alchemex. He is one of the villains of the game who Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, must face in the end. Although Peter ends up a secret antagonist and villain, his goal at least is somewhat altruistic here. Peter wants to rewrite the timeline so that he can bring back all those that he's lost during his time as a hero. In the end, this Peter presumably gets erased from the time stream after a younger version of Peter Parker is convinced to not go down this path and never become the CEO of Alchemex. Number 5. Nimrod Nimrod has become even more intense in the last few years, managing to make the overall silly sounding name of Nimrod strike fear into the hearts of mutants and X-Men fans everywhere. Nimrod, despite actually often being associated with the idea of someone being inept here in North America, is actually a word in a literary sense that can mean a skillful hunter, which actually makes it, I think, a very fitting name for Nimrod. But um, yeah, I didn't know that even until I was writing this, and then I was like, oh. <laughs> Does sound silly though, ya Nimrod. Skillful Hunter is definitely what Nimrod themselves has become associated with in terms of all the crazy stuff they've done. The Nimrod of Days of Future Past, Earth 811, is a type of sentinel that originally traveled back in time to fulfill its mission of destroying the X Men. In a past future viewed in Powers of X, we also learn that Nimrod has the potential to be the end of mutant kind and humankind as we know it. Humans basically become tools to be used by Nimrod to destroy mutants, and mutants are all but extinct in this future. Number 4. Extant The thing about time traveling characters is that you can have a few different versions of them, whether that be in one single timeline or across multiple timelines. In the case of Extant though, we are fortunately keeping things pretty linear thus far on this list. Extant is actually the name that Hank Hall took up after his Monarch persona. And if you thought Monarch was bad, Hank Hall's Extant is arguably worse. Extant is Monarch, but now not only advanced, but with the ability to time travel. He teams up with Hal Jordan's Parallax and the two villains plan to take control of time itself so that they might manipulate it as they so desire, altering reality itself. Number 3. Immortus Immortus is one of the most powerful enemies of the Avengers who was actually revealed to simply be an alternate path that the villain Kang the Conqueror could have chosen. Because there is so much time travel in Kang's past, there are a lot of alternate reality versions and versions from future and past timelines floating around that sometimes even come into conflict with each other in addition to also fighting heroes along the way. Immortus is one such alternate Kang self. Lord Immortus is what Kang would become while choosing to ally himself with the Timekeepers. He is virtually immortal using advanced technology to dramatically slow the appearance of aging and often spends his time traveling through it, fixing various issues with the timelines and maintaining them, which of course grants him a lot of power. Eventually, Immortus would be killed, but even after his supposed death, his corpse still played a key role in a few different plots. So even when Immortus was dead, he was still doing stuff, apparently. Number 2. Professor Zoom Professor Zoom is Eobard Thawne, the main villain of Barry Allen's The Flash, who traveled back in time just to mess with The Flash's life. That's how much he hates him. He has also been known as Reverse Flash before in the comics. Eobard Thawne hails from the future of the 25th century in DC Comics, being a very fast speedster powered by the negative speed force. There is much that Eobard can do and accomplish as a villain. Aside from traveling back in time and to other dimensions, he can use his super speed to not only be super fast, but also be super powerful in battle as his speed also inherently gives him super strength. He also possesses the ability to heal and the ability to manipulate molecules, allowing him to phase through things. Despite being a villain in the New Earth continuity, Thawne even used his molecular manipulation powers at one point to save the DC Universe, which I think makes you pretty powerful in my mind. Number 1. Kang the Conqueror While Kang might look a little silly in the comics with his, you know, his purple helmet and his floating time chair, he is not someone who should be underestimated. Kang hails from the 30th century, where he is believed to either be the descendant of Doctor Doom, Victor Von Doom, or 
or Mr. Fantastic, aka Reed Richards. He is known as Nathaniel Richards in his original future reality of Earth 6311, where he hails from. In fact, a young Nathaniel Richards would go on to become Iron Lad while running from his future self Kang, only to learn that he actually needed to become Kang or would actually kind of risk the destruction of time and the multiverse itself. That is maybe the most powerful element of Kang. He's like a Marvel absolute, and even though young Nathaniel wanted to become a hero and in essence defeat Kang, he had to accept his destiny or risk destroying multiple universes that have been shaped by a version of Kang and his actions. Kang is basically like integral. If you don't have Kang, everything dies, but if you have Kang in the reality, he's probably gonna try to mess with you. It's like, there's no good answer to Kang. At number 10 is Kliz's Klitz, Klitz, Klitz Plick. Just put the name up on the screen, please, because I, I can't pronounce that. This guy, believe it or not, is actually a descendant of Cal L. This weird little dude hails from far in the future, around the 67th century to be more specific, but he is immortal, so he's also encountered as far into the future as the 853rd century. He is also known to be a fifth dimensional being, which means that he can explore dimensions beyond the understanding of any normal humans, including myself. I don't get it. And I'm not alone. Most heroes wouldn't even understand it either. He has all the classic Kryptonian powers, but due to his bloodline including genes from a whole other race of superpowered beings, this future version of Superman also has 5D vision, which means that he can share his thoughts with others in real time, among other things. And he uses a weapon called the Hyperpoon, which is a hilarious name for a weapon that functions beyond the means of our comprehension. It's basically just more 5D stuff. At number 9 is Super Batman. Not much is known about this guy other than that he was at one point part of the Superman squad. He is known as a mixture of two different heroic traditions, having descended from both the Superman and Batman families. Of course, he wears a uniform that marries the designs of both Batman and Superman costumes and seems to have a combination of the two heroes' strengths as well. Sometime in the future, this guy is formed and even though there's little known about him, I put him on the list because a hybrid of Superman and Batman must be pretty powerful to some crazy degree we would never understand. At number eight is Superman Secundus. In the DC One Million timeline, Superman Secundus is explained to be Superman Prime's direct heir, having founded the Superman dynasty and successfully fighting off the Tyrant's son, as well as Solaris, among others. Then in All-Star Superman, another future Superman named Superman 2 appears, who seems to just be the same version of the hero as Superman Secundus, just in a different iteration. This future stuff gets a little bit complicated, but this future Superman seems pretty powerful, and since he's known to be the son of Superman Prime, I felt I just needed to throw him on the list. At number seven, we've got Connor Kent, or FKA Superboy. This future version of Superman is pretty unique in that he's actually a clone of both Superman and Lex Luthor. He spends his youth in fear that he'll turn out more like Lex Luthor in all the worst ways, and unfortunately, that's actually what happens. As Connor grows up into a more mature hero, he gains a reputation as a brutal version of Superman who uses extreme force against his enemies with little to no remorse. But later on during the Infinite Crisis storyline, we learn that this future Connor Kent is actually a clone of an early version of himself, which is a relief to him, and but doesn't make much sense. Does it make sense? I don't know. Anyway, he's not Lex Luthor, at least. At number six, we have Adam Ken plus 477 SPMN. The future is horrible at coming up with names apparently, but anyway, this future version of Superman is pretty cool because he kind of comes across as so futuristic that he's actually a much more complex being, but also a sort of simpler and stripped down being than Superman is now in a weird way, which is how it seems like the future would actually be if you went forward far enough. In Superman number 400, we see a future where Superman has died and his descendants have reproduced with humans, creating a new type of super being. But when they accidentally create a massive vortex in space, one of their leaders, Adam Ken, elects himself to plug it while the rest of them turn themselves into energy for some reason, to protect themselves. Anyway, the plan works and the vortex is mended, leaving only Adam Kent, we'll just call him Adam, leaving Adam as the only living being in the universe. 
So he thinks, until he meets his Eve. Halfway through and in number 5, Captain America 3099. Being used as a skin in the game Marvel Future Fight, Captain America 3099 is in essence Captain America, but make it Robocop. He has a holographic shield that still actually works like a shield, but is probably one of the coolest and weirdest versions of Captain America I've ever seen. It looks really sweet, and I'd love to see someone cosplay this. Like, maybe I'll be able to like grab a piece of like acrylic or something and make the shield myself, because like, you can put the LEDs and stuff. It's, it's dope. But he is, after all, the same old Captain America. So pretty powerful, but not as powerful as some other heroes. But I'm actually serious though, someone needs to make this shield. Whether it's the Hacksmith or Odin makes or something, I'm, I make this shield, okay? I will, ha I will happily do my best to get the rest of the costume together, because this is like my next goal. In it for Old Man Logan. The dystopia in Old Man Logan is about as screwed up as it gets. It was, after all, the inspiration behind the Logan movie, if you didn't already know. The original comic run of this story was all about Logan and a blind Hawkeye traveling across a country that had been completely conquered by supervillains. Those villains included the Abomination, Magneto, Doctor Doom, and Red Skull. The other villains that appear also include a venomized T-Rex, no I'm not kidding, and the Hulk gang, which is a whole other can of worms I don't really want to get into. Eventually though, Hulk and Logan have one final phase off, toe to toe, shot for shot, and Logan ends up decapitating the Hulk and then is on his way, finding a new sense of purpose, wanting to take the country back from the supervillains who took control. Which is a noble yet probably lost cause, because let's be honest, would he really have won in that scenario? I don't think so. In at 3, Maestro. Speaking of the Hulk, Maestro from the future and perfect storyline is actually the version of Hulk present in the Old Man Logan series. First appearing in the Incredible Hulk Future and Perfect number 1 from 1992, Maestro possesses Bruce Banner's intelligence and the Hulk's more malevolent personality traits. After a devastating nuclear war destroyed most of the human race, the radiation from the war ended up basically supercharging the Hulk, turning him into an even more powerful version. He then ended up um, violently interacting with his cousin, She-Hulk, which resulted in the birth of the Hulk gang. Yeah, I know I said I didn't want to get into it, but at this point I, I kind of have to to explain this. This is absolutely terrifying because while Hulk is already a freaking monster, add more radiation, more power, and the destruction of a whole country and Bruce Banner's intelligence, there's certainly something to be scared of. Not only that, but th this was in 1992. They ran this story along with the whole Hulk gang thing in 1992. Nobody would do this now, let alone 1992. It just seems like that that's insane to me. Penultimately, in at number 2, Kingdom Come Superman. Yet another world where Lois Lane dies. Except this time it's directly at the hands of the Joker, who had flooded the Daily Planet with his own toxin, killing everyone but Lois who had managed to locate a gas mask. However, she tried to attack the Joker, but then Joker cracks her skull. Superman returns and Lois succumbs to her injuries and dies. As the Joker arrives for his trial though, he's killed by a new superhero called Magog. But then, Magog ends up being acquitted of his charges, which just makes Superman a because, you know, the public is embracing a killer. But I mean, like, let's be honest, they, they do that anyway. And already disheartened by the death of Lois Lane, Kal-El abandons his life as Superman and retreats to the Fortress of Solitude where he spends the next decade. Superman eventually returns to reform the Justice League with the goal of capturing heroes who followed Magog's example and took to killing, which results in many a battle and a nuke targeted towards metahuman genes. But in the end, Superman starts dating Wonder Woman and they end up expecting a child. <laughs> Hopefully Joker doesn't make you think you're fighting Doomsday. Finally, in at number one, Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan is considered the most powerful superhero in comics because he possesses basically unlimited powers. He debuted in the graphic novel limited series of Watchmen, published in 1986 and 1987, but Manhattan later on became a major player in the DC Universe. He was revealed to be responsible for the Flashpoint event which ended up creating the New 52 timeline in the process, something that removed 10 years of history of DC characters, and he did it on his own. So how could I not include Dr. Man Manhattan on this list when the Watchmen comic is very dystopian. The dystopia in Watchmen is caused by superheroes who thought that they could save the world but ended up leaving it hollow and broken. And Ozymandias makes another dystopia on top of that thanks to him thinking that the only way to, to fix the world would be to destroy it. I still don't get this thought process but I also totally get this thought process. Like thinking that the world needs a reset I understand but actually trying to reset it is something else entirely. At number 10 we've got Punisher 2099. 
In the future, Jake Gallows takes on the mantle of Punisher and he makes for a pretty impressive version of the anti-hero. Being a former member of the Church of Thor, he takes on a role as a sort of bodyguard for hire while also functioning as a police officer under President Doom's regime. He's driven by vengeance after his mother, brother and sister-in-law are all killed by Kron Stone and eventually ends the man's murderous streak himself, which is a pretty impressive demonstration of his power on its own. This futuristic Punisher shows some really advanced fighting skill as well and gains even better stats after he's given a bionic arm. He's also able to blend in very well due to a face scrambler he uses to avoid detection. At number 9 we have Captain America 2099 and I'll be focusing on Roberta Mendez since there are a few versions of the hero in this storyline. This version of Captain America is created by Alchemax, a corporation in the future that forces Roberta to take the super soldier serum and gain her powers. Roberta's Captain America becomes the leader of Alchemax as Avengers and has virtually the same abilities as the present day's Cap. Although she naturally doesn't have as much experience as Steve Rogers due to her younger age. She also can't control when she turns into Captain America, only making the switch when she hears trigger words such as assemble to turn into Cap and dismissed to turn back to Roberta. But despite her shortcomings, she's still a really competent Captain America and ranks as one of the more powerful heroes from the future. At number 8 we have Bishop. Bishop is introduced in the Days of Future Past storyline as a member of the X-Men. In this futuristic world, Sentinels have enslaved Earth and Bishop along with the rest of the X-Men make it their task to fight back. Well ok, it's not really the X-Men, it's actually called Xavier's Security Enforcers and is known to be a futuristic organization which is kind of a successor to the X-Men. Anyway, most of Bishop's influence comes when he travels back in time and uses his foresight of the grim future to try and alter his timeline and stop the Sentinels from taking over. He has the impressive ability to absorb any energy around him including light, magic or psionic energy and charge up his own attack as well as a healing factor and naturally extremely efficient time travel. Much like Punisher 2099, Bishop also has a bionic arm which heightens his fighting and strength abilities. At number 7 is Iron Lad. Nathaniel Richards is a very powerful younger iteration of Iron Man from Earth 6311. And one of the biggest discrepancies between his suit and that of Earth 616 Tony Stark's is that it allows him to travel through time. As the leader of the Young Avengers, Nate Richards isn't just some guy who gets his hand on an Iron Man suit. He's actually a teenage version of Kang the Conqueror before his days as one of the most powerful villains in the game. Iron Lad has a pretty good power set set as well with neurokinetic armor which is made from a rare alloy from the 40th century. The armor actually listens to the wearer's subconscious thoughts and basically offers them superhuman abilities based on what they need in any given situation. Iron Lad also has a time traveling spaceship which is pretty dang cool on its own and offers its own form of power to the futuristic hero. At number 6 is Hulk 2099. This version of the giant green beast shows similar abilities to the Hulk we know from the present but instead of Bruce Banner the conduit of the Hulk persona in this timeline is John Eisenhart. Eisenhart is a studio executive who studies the story of the original 616 Hulk who by John's era has been dead for some time. During a conflict with a group of Hulk worshippers called the Knights of Banner, John is caught in a gamma bomb explosion and turned into the Hulk himself. Just like the present day Hulk, his skin is bulletproof, he naturally has a huge increase of strength and Hulk form, but the most impressive advantage this Hulk has over the original is that he keeps his full intelligence and personality well turned. Not only that, but John can transform into the Hulk at will. As we all know, this offers a huge boost of Power, basically taking out the main drawback for the present day Earth 616 Hulk. Number 5, Pappy Banner. And from happiness back to tears again. Ready to talk about Old Man Logan? Yet again? Good. Basically, in this dystopian future where the villains all banded together to take out all of the heroes, Wolverine has become a farmer. A simple man trying to just make ends meet and keep his family alive. But the main antagonist in this tale is the Hulk gang, made up of the incestuous children and grandchildren of Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, and what he claims was his cousin Jennifer Walters, as in She-Hulk. This gang of horrible Hulks was led by none other than the one true Pappy Banner himself. Pappy Banner doesn't need to change his form to access the powers of the Hulk. In the fight between Old Man Logan 
Logan and Pappy Banner, this regular human Bruce Banner was tossing cows and throwing punches that sent Logan flying. But when he did transform, he grew to a massive, overweight, maniacally twisted version of the Hulk that ate old man Logan whole. Well, uh, until Logan healed up and burst out of the Hulk's stomach. So, that's nice. Number four, Hulk The End. The End series chronicles the last days of various characters in the Marvel Universe. For a lot of doomsday type stories, it often ends in the Earth being destroyed in a nuclear war. But what remains after that? Well, basically, the Hulk remains. As the only human left on planet Earth, Bruce Banner wanders the wastes in an eternal struggle with himself. As in, an eternal struggle with the Hulk. Basically, Bruce has seen the deaths of all those he loved, all those he cared about. There's nothing left in this world for him, and he would prefer to just pass on. But no matter what he does, the Hulk does not let him. Speaking of the big green Goliath, he thinks Banner's will to pass away is a puny human thought, and he wants to be the strongest there is and to just be left alone. The two of them have a huge internal falling out. Eventually, Bruce has a heart attack, and while Hulk himself goes on to survive somehow, he now realizes just how alone he really is. Damn. Number three, Breaker of Worlds. The Breaker of Worlds Hulk first appeared in a kind of side story within the Immortal Hulk storyline. In an alternate timeline, the Immortal Hulk becomes possessed by the one below all, who went rampaging until the end of time, and the end of this iteration of the multiverse. He has destroyed everything, literally everything. He has defeated Franklin Richards, Galactus, all the cosmic entities, and he shattered planets and crushed stars with his bare hands. The story itself follows an alien that had explored out trying to find out if anything was left in the universe, and there wasn't. This alien is living in the ninth cosmos, meaning the ninth version of the multiverse after the immortal Hulk slash the one below all destroyed the last version. This new ninth multiverse is in tatters though. The one below all Hulk has consumed the souls of every being he has destroyed, bolstering his own power enough so that he is planet sized and just flies around like a living curse, ending all things in existence until there is nothing left, ever. Luckily, the alien sent a warning far into the past to the present time. The Breaker of Worlds is what happens when the one below all wins, and it's not good. Coming in at number two is Space Punisher Hulk. This version of the Hulk in the really awesome Space Punisher story is a four-armed, 30-foot-tall murderous monstrosity. He completely took out the Fantastic Four, he bit Sabretooth in half, took off Deadpool's head and threw him out into space, and he completely decimated a group of six Watchers, as in the race that Uatu the Watcher is a part of. And if you don't know, the Watchers are sort of on par in power to Galactus, so yes, this is pretty impressive. The future space version of the Hulk is more like an exoskeleton with Bruce Banner contained within the Hulk's chest. But they are still separate entities, allowing Punisher to end the life of Bruce Banner, which in turn allows the Hulk to just jump off into space and leave everyone alone. It's intense, it's really weird, it's extremely brutal, as you'd expect from a Punisher story, and we love it. And coming in at number one is Maestro. If we are talking about alternate future versions of the Hulk, you'd be just a big old silly billy if you thought we weren't gonna talk about the evil ruler of dystopia, the possible future version of the Hulk, Maestro. Maestro is the far future ruler of a mega city that rose up after the events of a nuclear war. After being exposed to so much extra radiation, he gained extra strength and over time became more and more intelligent. He had powered up enough to be double the strength of the base Hulk and just as smart as Bruce Banner, while also becoming nefariously evil. Earth 616 Hulk ends up traveling forward in time to stop Maestro, which proves to be a much more difficult task than he initially imagined. Hulk's experience with Maestro gave Hulk nightmares of what he could become for years and years and years to come into the future. Number 10, Savior. Savior is a future version of Tim Drake who becomes Batman. Doesn't sound so villainous, right? Well, this future Bat version of Timothy Drake takes things eh, a little too far, which is what makes him more villainous than heroic, despite taking up his own version of the cape and the cowl. Drake in the Titans Tomorrow reality is known by the vigilante codename of Savior and has gone 
gone to extremes to do what he believes is right. Meaning that Drake doesn't hold back and kills villains or even heroes who get in his way, eliminating them permanently. Drake and the world were seemingly transformed by a crisis event. In addition, Batman was also killed by Batwoman, which heavily shaped the life of Tim Drake in this reality, who would then do what he swore he would never do and continue on the Batman legacy in Bruce's place. Number 9. King Thanos King Thanos is an alternate version of Thanos who hails from a pretty terrible future where he has successfully destroyed almost all life in the universe in an attempt to win the favor of Lady Death. In this universe, Frank Castle also becomes Ghost Rider after being killed and then making a deal to become Ghost Rider returning to Earth in an attempt to avenge the fallen heroes of Earth only to return too late with Earth pretty much being uh, decimated by Thanos already. As Ghost Rider, Castle lost his mind from loneliness but would later have no other choice left but to become the Herald of King Thanos. King Thanos actually has a few people left to kill and needs help so he actually sends Cosmic Ghost Rider aka Frank Castle back in time for a younger version of himself to basically help him in his final battle. And friends before we move on to this next spot if you are loving this list and you want more time travel future based lists be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8 Kronos. Kronos is a somewhat confusing character in DC continuity because there are multiple versions of him. And this confusion isn't entirely the fault of alternate futures or time travel either. It's actually more to do with the trajectory of the DC main continuity. Kronos, not to be confused with Kronos, no age, back in the New Earth continuity was known to be a clock obsessed villain of Ray Palmer's Captain Adam. However, his clock obsession would soon develop into an obsession to perfect the means of time travel. And this obsession would translate to his prime Earth continuity counterpart, who was an agent of Argus specializing in, you guessed it, time travel. There is also another version of Kronos, which is an entirely different person, Walker Gabriel, who found Clinton's tech and then more used it to become an anti-hero instead of like a full-blown villain. Number 7. Doctor Doom. Weirdly enough, in a way, Doctor Doom is also a villain from the future, as he does like to travel back to the past to enact some villainous plots. He traveled back in time to study with Morgan Le Fay, and he's also gone back in time as well with Iron Man to the period of Arthurian legend. One of his most iconic plots, in my mind as well, was when he wanted to use the Fantastic Four to help him steal Blackbeard's treasure by traveling back in time and recovering it. Which seems like a really easy way to possibly mess up the timeline for a reward that somehow, I I don't know, it doesn't really seem worth all that trouble. I know it's a chest of treasure doom, historical pirate treasure no less, but is it really worth possibly changing the future for? <laughs> and messing with time? I don't know. Number 6. Monarch Monarch is another villain from the future who actually it turns out was originally a hero. I love these reveals, especially when you are the hero finding out that you become the villain. <gasps> gasp. Monarch is actually Hank Hall, who ends up becoming a villain in a dystopian future after his partner Dove dies. For those who don't know, Hank Hall is the hero Hawk of the superhero duo Hawk and Dove. Hank wouldn't be the only hero to become known as the future villain Monarch. In fact, it seems likely much of the villainy behind Monarch comes from the suit that Hank and later Captain Adam wear while donning that mantle. In fact, in the case of Captain Adam, it seems the suit is very much to blame here. Suit making people evil and Crazy. At number 5 we have the Wolverine from Wolverine The End. This comic series is known to offer the reader a look into how these characters face, well their ends. And in Wolverine's issues we face what seems to be an even older and more grim version of an old man Logan. But for Wolverine we're left with a cliffhanger instead of his death, suggesting that there will be even more future iterations of Logan and or James Howlett to come. In the final issue of this The End series, James faces off against his own older brother, John Howlett Jr. And as they duke it out in front of an audience of military personnel, James ends up accidentally killing his brother, driving his claws through his chest after a fall. After some epic final words are exchanged, we watch James sit in silence as it's suggested that he is apprehended by the authorities. But this isn't confirmed that's actually where the series ends. This is definitely one of the more gothic and darker versions of Wolverine and the dark epic storyline that this series explores really reflects how much Wolverine has been through 
over the years, even into the future. At number four, we have Ultimate Cable. We all know that Cable is a time traveler and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, on Earth 2107, this isn't the case. Instead, James Howlett takes on the mantle of Cable and sports a big scar across his face. This is from a battle taking place in the future where this Wolverine version of Cable or vice versa, fights Apocalypse with the X-Men and his arm is once again ripped off. When Apocalypse absorbs his healing factor, he uses the severed arm with the claws on it against Cable Wolverine and leaves a massive scar on the face. And since this and the dismemberment come after his healing power is taken away, these wounds remain. Luckily, this version of Wolverine has other abilities like Cable's and eventually finds a way to travel back in time 30 years to collect Professor or X and try and right the wrongs of the future. At number three is Old Man Phoenix. First appearing in Marvel Legacy number one, this version of Wolverine is, as you could imagine by the name, Old Man Logan possessing the Phoenix Force. Hailing from Earth 14412, this version of Logan basically mirrors that of 616 Logan up until King Loki wipes out humankind. Logan is known to be dead under unknown circumstances, but is soon chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force and travels the universe destroying celestial bodies on his way. When he eventually encounters a future version of Loki, he goes back in time to undo the damage that Loki had done letting go of the Phoenix Force in the process. And this is a request by Loki himself, after seeing something that changes his intentions for supreme power on a dime. This version of Wolverine is definitely the most powerful on the list, both in influence and sheer power. And he looks pretty badass as well, like an old angry wizard, fire wizard. At number two, we have Old Man Logan. Just good old Old Man Logan. Everyone knows this one. I wanted to put him higher on the list than his Phoenix Force counterpart because even though the previous entry is more powerful, Old Man Logan is just more iconic. Old Man Logan first appears in Fantastic Four number 558, but is most well known for his own self-titled series. In this future, Logan has a family, but is in constant fear for his life as most of the world is ruled by supervillains. Most superheroes are dead this far into the future and with his family on the line, he becomes a driven father and husband, packing a punch even more powerful now that it's driven by love and the fear that comes with it. After he raises enough money to protect his family from the Hulk gang, which is a thing in the future I guess, the gang kills his family anyway, leaving old man Logan with only one choice to kill the original Hulk then and there. He is then integrated into the mainstream Marvel Universe after the events of Secret Wars. At number one, we have the Days of Future Past Wolverine or Wolverine from Earth 811. On Earth 811, this version of Wolverine lives in a time 33 years ahead of the modern 616 version. And when the Watcher from Earth 9997 looks into Logan's past, he unveils that Logan's past isn't quite as it seemed. Instead of being born sometime in the 1800s and tested on in a lab, X-51 finds that he had actually descended from a tribe of humans known as the Moon People. In this future storyline, he's faced with the task of protecting the mutant race after the Mutant Control Act is put into effect and Sentinels are ordered as the protectors of America. After a few search and rescue missions, Wolverine joins the resistance and fights with his mutant comrades, including Magneto, to defeat the Sentinels. In this reality, Wolverine has all the same powers as the 616 version, but he does have access to the Watcher's transportation devices as well on Earth's moon, which could transport him anywhere on Earth instantly. 